Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. In this video I'm going to examine the implications of adding three additional Raptor vacuum engines to Starship over its original 3 plus 3C level. So now we have nine engines. This is according to a tweet by Elon Musk. So, um, well, I mean, this is one of those things where I think if he says it, it's probably accurate. But, uh, you know, we have to judge for ourselves on that one but anyway uh so it seems like this is the the configuration that they're gonna go with so why 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 would they want to do this well the, the main reason is if the sea level engines are not getting as much isp basically or at not as much as they originally planned with the original configuration uh why is that well uh, as far as i understand it raptor 2 is going to have a larger throat area in order to produce more thrust the throat area scales with the mass flow rate uh, so, yeah, more mass flow rate means larger throat area, means more thrust. But since they don't have any extra space at the bottom of uh, the Super Heavy, that means the nozzle exit is still the same area, and therefore the area ratio has been reduced, and therefore the ISP is reduced. So, if that is the case, uh, and again, this is just based on my understanding, uh, that means that Super Heavy itself would get less efficiency, and to compensate for that, you would want Starship to uh, pick up the slack, as it were, get more efficiency, and also produce more delta V. And so one way of doing that is making sure that the mix of vacuum versus sea level engines is tilted more in favor of vacuum. Instead of having three vacuum, three sea level, yeah, six vacuum, C, three, uh, three sea level would produce a higher ISP, a uh, higher specific impulse and efficiency. So that's a good reason to do it. And then, of course, you add more propellant load because now you have more thrust here and then you can get more delta V. So basically, that's it in a nutshell. And uh, well, you can also get a little bit more payload out of it. So that's another plus. Uh, so we are going to test the payload capacity of it. I already did so during a live stream. Uh, we used this. It is the cargo version. Uh, and I'll go through all the numbers that I've got. And I've decided that we'll try a 155 ton tank. 150 seemed to go fine. So 155 tons of abgas, that's uh, what this is. And then we've got a mount. But I should caution you, this uh, Starship would not be able to re-enter the atmosphere. We tried. Uh, but the problem is, once it's dumped the payload, uh, we have too much mass in the tail because we've added three engines. So my original balance for this, which I had to do a lot of testing to get right, is out the window, right? because now we have it completely different. And so I'll have to move the center of mass forward artificially in order to compensate for the three extra engines in the back and do some more testing to make sure that it ends up in the right place. So yes. Now, how much propellant did I add? Well, overall, without the engines or flaps or payload, uh, this is 1,600 tons. And so, uh, that gets us to a reasonable thrust weight ratio where it would light and therefore I think this is a good amount. Of course, the burn time is actually fairly quick so you could add more propellant to this. If we are going to make full use of the extra engines here, I don't think they're going to go less than this. Let's put it that way. Uh, so yeah, but you could add more because our burn time is still fairly low. The original Starship uh, configuration with the six engines and the amount of propellant that they had there was pretty much optimal. Uh, so it didn't really need more engines. If you're thinking, oh, adding more engines to it without any propellant load would make it better. No, it'll just add more dry mass. It was already designed efficiently. So yeah, it's not like one of those uh, really, really low thrust weight ratio upper stages that drives everybody crazy, uh, even though sometimes they work just fine for their purpose. Uh, this was already designed fine. So there has to be a reason for adding three extra engines besides I want more thrust, basically, because there's no good reason to want more thrust here. Um, yep, so that's why my my supposition is that it's because of the specific impulse of the sea level engines. Now, some people, uh, so there's been a lot of weird comments on Twitter, so let me address one right off the bat. It's not a launch abort system. It can't be. It's not even close to the thrust weight ratio. Even if they kept the propellant load the same, even if they reduced the propellant load in Starship, it's not going to be a launch abort system. You need a thrust weight ratio of like four minimum uh, for that to happen. And you're neglecting the fact that one thing that can explode is Starship, <laughs> right? Uh, 
it is just as likely to uh, explode as Super Heavy is. You need a launch abort system that would get you out of this. So, yeah, I mean, so far SpaceX has only had upper stages explode on it. The first stages have been just fine. So the solution for launch escape uh, that would work is still the solution that I had in my original Starship model, which is some sort of crew pod that ejects out. Uh, and you're gonna need some sort of separate crew area from the rest of the crew habitat because the whole thing is oriented differently during launch. Uh, it's not gonna make a whole lot of sense oriented this way uh, because they lie on their back during launch. And it's best to have them in a small area, everybody packed together so that you can eject them out and put parachutes on so that they can be recoverable if you want to save them, right? Uh, this is the most logical way of doing it, and uh, it'll have an airlock to the rest of the habitat area. You want uh, some sort of closure because otherwise when it splashes down, you don't want it to flood uh, if it's going to splash down. Uh, so, yeah. Remembering that with Challenger, for instance, the, the crew cabin was intact until it hit the water. So they could have been saved with just parachutes at that point. So if you want to create a separate little crew cabin, not that little considering the number of people they want to put in, but a separate crew cabin uh, with parachutes, it might save something. So, but yeah, don't think of making a whole launch escape system out of this. That's not happening. So with that said, because I saw too much of that on Twitter today, uh, or yesterday actually, uh, let us proceed. There were other weird ideas, but I think I'll leave the rest be. Hopefully they'll just end up in oblivion. Uh, so 33 engines. Uh, so let me give you the stats. Uh, we've got 33 sea level engines down here per spec. And uh, I've gone with my Raptor Max configuration. You can see two tons, 230 tons of thrust. So this is Raptor 2 style. Uh, 335.7 sea level, 358.9 vacuum ISP. And we do have a hypothetical one just in case they go crazy with stuff, but uh, so far not looking like that's going to happen. The vacuum engines, I've uh, limited the gimbal, but I wanted just a little bit to save myself. Uh, still 230 tons of thrust, uh, 261.8 sea level, 377.7 seconds vacuum. And as you see that, the dry mass of Starship we'll uh, examine in orbit. The dry mass of this tank is 140 tons without the engines. Okay, And so that is how that is. And we haven't added any additional fuel to that. So let's see if we can get 155 tons to orbit. Okay, seems like a nice stay here in Boca Chica. Throttle up. SAS on, it's going to be loud, and we are reserving fuel for the recovery of Super Heavy as well as the recovery of Starship here. Of course, it's not an expendable mode test. So, ignition. And launch. You can see about 72 mega newtons total on launch. We will have lag thanks to having 33 engines. I did notice with uh, dismay that of course 33 engines on the first stage plus 9 engines on Starship makes 42. I sure hope that's not the reason why we get the extra engines. For those who uh, might not know, 42 is the answer to everything in Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Uh, it's just that we don't know what the question is. And uh, we do know, know that Elon is fond of Hitchhiker's Guide by other references. Also, originally having 42 engines on the ITS system, which was the precursor to Starship Super Heavy. Somebody during the live stream asked if I was going to have the whole apparatus for catching Super Heavy um, and all of that business. There's no physical way I can get this back to a very definite location in Kerbal Space Program given the physics rate. 
It's just not possible without some intense cheating. So, I don't think so. Uh, that's not gonna happen. An area like uh, about a kil kilometer wide? Sure, I mean, if as long as we could land anywhere in this area, that's probably possible. If we had regular physics timing, you know, real life stuff, that'd be a lot easier. Or reaction wheels, like they do in stock. Or a smaller world. Any of those things would be immensely helpful. A smaller world, reaction wheels, uh, infinite throttling. Anyway, we are going to reserve uh, 14 seconds here. Uh, that's pretty conservative, I'll show you in a bit. It's about 10%, a little less than 10% of the stage. Okay, that'll do. Okay, actually 13 seconds, separation and ignition. And we're going 1,800 meters per second surface. Uh, this stage would have to kill all that and then burn back about the equal amount of uh, velocity. And then it'll have about 500 extra to land after that. I'll pitch up a little bit. Once we switch to the vacuum engines, we're going to need a little bit more time. Well, I'm going to have to hope that... The RCS is good enough to hold things together. Gotta uh, shut down some engines here. The sea level engines. So we still have 1G of acceleration, but we don't have much gimbling. We have a little bit of gimbling. Remember, I, for safety's sake, I left a little bit on those. A very trivial amount considering even their configured gimbling is very limited. And actually, differential throttle should work even better with six engines. Okay, shut down 210 by 155. We have 700 meters per second left, but that's with the payload inside. So let us uh, get the payload out. So that's with 155 tons. It's just a dummy payload, so there's no propulsion or anything on it. So with that out, we have 1,373, which should be good enough for deorbit and landing, uh, with some margin. And we do want some margin after- oh! I, uh, <clears throat> okay, I've done something bad. <laughs> yes, there are colliders on the cargo bay door, if you notice. Uh, so... That actually perturbed our orbit quite a lot. Uh, I just want to check the dry mass of this out. Everything being uh, emptied, so let's see. 135 tons. So 135 tons dry. Now, of course, the regular cargo starship that we used to have was not this heavy. was not supposed to be this heavy. But if they're going to lengthen it and add three engines, this is what I come up with. Uh, maybe it's a little bit lighter, but I think there's a conservative estimate, so you can judge for yourself. Uh, but I am going to have to work on balancing it out for entry again, and Mars landing. I mainly had done Mars landing, and now everything has changed, so... Yeah, back to square one on that. Uh, well, more or less. So, anyway, that is the test. I think 155 is comfortable with this configuration, assuming the numbers that I have. So with that little report, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.